What up, guys? Welcome back to our Houston series of the Barber Brigade Talk Show. I'm going to sound the mic. Russ Wool. We've had a lot of federations in the last year, I think, try to fight for like the number one spot or the number one unifying spot for Seems like some have been fighting for the bottom. <laughs> some have been fighting for the bottom, too. <laughs> Which federation do you think is going to be like the federation to compete in in the next five years? Ooh, five years. It's flip flop in the last 10 years, like four times. Yeah. yeah. I'd say the last half decade, maybe decade is probably USAPL, right? Yeah. But then because they separated from IPF, yeah. there's no like, that's the ceiling. America's a ceiling. There's no like, how do we get there? Yeah. I think it's just gonna, whatever the governing body that has um, the IPF as the umbrella is the one that's gonna keep progressing. I think, uh, I think the split was like one of the worst things that's happened to powerlifting recently. Yeah, that's what I think. I agree. Too. Yeah, it, it just it just split the sport again for no reason, and well, there was a reason, but it's just unfortunate because a lot of the natural lifters, like the USAPL, was the the home for that. Yeah. And now that, that split's happened, it's like now you're gonna have like two, because the IPF is still the IPF. Yeah. It's still big internationally. It's the only one that's connected. Yeah, you can't you can't beat that. USAPL though has like the mark the huge the biggest market share of like natural lifters um now the ipf is gonna have to open up a different fed it's just it's a very unfortunate yeah because before it was like the not natty and the natty and they're like, okay cool there's yeah. two but now it's the well, natty like is the natty is two and then what's the other one well not with the not natties but like from 20 part of the whole thing i believe started with like louis simmons and this may get some heat but a lot of those guys would go compete and switch feds based on like judging and like political power mm -hmm. so they'd go where they would get the calls and okay. where they had buddies and so mm -hmm. you started jumping feds in 2000s like mm -hmm. they they ran with the spf for a long time and then they ran with the apa and then the apf and they dumped around but none of them made a big enough connection nationally to um make a a a, a clear cut winner Mm. So everyone's jumping these feds because it was less common that you would compete at any fed that was near your city. Yeah. So you didn't have to drive. Mm. Then Dennison left the USPF and he started the USPA. And that started to make big ripples in California, I think, because California had a lot of talent in that era. Mm. The Dan Green era. Mm. You had all these big hitters that look dope and they're raw. Because the IPF was known for single ply. Yeah, yeah. Right? Like the raw lifting wasn't really cool there. Then the USAPL, probably because of guys like Candido and Barquan, made the USAPL get some, like being natty was kind of a cool thing to do, yeah. which has changed recently for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> you go to TikTok and you're a fucking dork if you don't take steroids. Like, you're 13, you're not on trend yet? Yeah. yeah. Too late. So I feel like 2010 to 2015, there were still like five feds that no one really, you know, you didn't know. Then the USAPL got a big rise. You mm. made a big push in that to help people find a, a very standardized way to compete, which was cool. Then the USPA had like a three year domination in the untested, but then WRPF came about yeah. and they started forking out a lot of money for the untested and even uh, the tested, some drug free or natty, whatever, started competing mm. in the WRPF too, just cause there was money of mono lift. Some people do just like the deadlift bar, et cetera. Yeah. And then it was, you know, some people are fighting for the bottom. So it seems like USPA <laughs> didn't make some good decisions business wise. Yeah, um, yeah. And now it's kind of, yeah, again, then the P the powerlift in America split. Yeah. So now there's two on the natty side in America that are, are legitimate um, and probably the WRPF on the untested side. So yeah. I, I agree that in a beautiful world, we just have one and one. Mm. Right. All right. You want to take some PEDs? Yeah. Go compete over here. Oh, you want to stay in natural, right? Let's go over here. Yeah. But I just don't know if it'll happen, man. I think Sheffield is uh, is another big play too. Yeah. I think Sheffield's going to shift the balance a lot in the next coming years. Um, I think the ripple effects of having that uh, is going to. Uh, I think it's it's going to affect the USAPL for sure. It's run under the IPF umbrella, yeah, right? So yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like yeah. the IPF is that the has, biggest stage of powerlifting so far. Yeah, besides 100%. the current, probably. Yeah, because I think um, I think when it comes to like where people are going to go, like IPF has that structure where it's worldwide, like. I'm not gonna lie, for me, it means a lot if I'm able to say like I'm a world champion. Yeah. yeah. So like, yeah. I, I can't do that in the USAPL anymore. And like, that's becoming more and more evident as I keep competing. Yeah. Whenever I finish up with nationals, I'm like, damn, I feel like I should be doing something you else. You want one more journey. Yeah, I feel like there's like another prep that I should be getting ready for and it's not there. What's the balance of skill uh, in the IPF, let's say even pre-split um, from the world to the US? Are you talking about like- Like the, how much does the US win? Let's say there's 10 gold medals. Oh, okay. How much does the US win in? Um, before it was up there, but now like, bro, you have like, you have people like France. I would say like, 
I think out of 10, maybe like five or six. Okay, so we're still fairly dominant, right? Because there's a lot of countries there. Yeah, but, but that, that there's other countries that are getting strong. Like with the women's, that's like where they're starting to make some a lot of ground. Yeah. Like a lot of different, uh, com uh, a lot of different countries are getting a lot more successful. The men's, it's pretty dominant with US, but. Because even Olympic medals are kind of like that. Yeah. Like America dominates yeah. like crazy. And that's then, what I was asking. And everyone kind of fights for the crumbs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's, uh, it's changing. I just, I, like I said, I think the IPF, like the structure that it provides and like the fact that it has like the world championship and then also um, Sheffield, like with the money, I, I don't think that the USAPL is going to be the top federation in the next like five years. There might've been underlying reasons with the split, but I think the public reason was the USAPL wanted to test more than other federations, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what's your take on that? Do you not mind going to the IPF? I guess even though they're drug testing slightly less strict because they're not going with wada is what was the so none of them i actually think even use wada technically they go by wada uh standardizations mm -hmm. right i might be incorrect there but I something no, like that. i just but, i just know they come and test me I just yeah let's keep it a little more basic so, yeah, yeah. so usapl wanted to test more than yeah. the ipf standard i see and the ipf basically kicked them out for that which is crazy yeah, that's yeah just it's... a weird take like oh you want to be better than us <laughs> get out yeah yeah uh, it's like they're not fine compliance or yeah whatever, so. so is that okay with you you don't mind going ipf although maybe it's easier to get by i don't really care yeah. i mean so like for me like i just i think i'm the best anyway so like I feel like if you're going to pop, I think what IPF does is like they test at the highest of levels and the USAPL just wants to test like everything. Yeah. Um, and I don't really have a problem with that. So either way. Yeah. It's whatever to me, to be honest. Would you ever hop into the WRPF? No. Just don't care? No. Yeah. I, I just feel like the, I, I, I would have to like observe more, but it doesn't seem like big or anything like that. There's more money. No, I don't, I don't compete for money. All right. Yeah, like money. Money isn't a driver for me. <laughs> I'll compete for money. Nah, nah. Money has never been like a driver for me to compete. Like when I watched the Sheffield, I could give a, I, I could give two shits about the payout. Yeah. It was more so just like that. I think like visibly. That that's it. That's yeah. what powerlifting should look Elevated like. Elevated competition. Yeah, like the stadium format, like the uh, the UFC like approach to like the um, like the event production. Yeah, event production, all that kind of stuff. I want to go to that. I could care less about like making like money competing, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, 100%. But it's a beautiful thing. I want people to make money competing. Yeah, you want that's it possible. Not, yeah, that's not the reason why I want to go over. So um, you're saying that you don't care if other people, like you go into Powerlifting America or IPF where the testing is more lax. You're saying you don't care if um, people can possibly sneak more PEDs in? You just have full confidence in your abilities. Yeah, I'm, that's probably like an unpopular opinion, but yeah, I don't really care because I just feel like. So you're not the type of person to go, okay, these are the rules. How can I maximize the rules? No, nah, I'm not like that. No? Nah? Nah. The IPF then to you is cool because the standardization and professionality of the thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And the USAPL offers the same thing to a certain extent, but also it's tough because I'm seeing some things that they're doing that is just kind of like, damn, like, why, like, why aren't we doing this? Or like, I see the IPF and like its affiliates making uh, changes and actually like developing. And I was thinking that the USAPL would be the ones doing that. Yeah, yeah. because they got smaller. You yeah, they got smaller. It's like, okay, changes. yeah, exactly. Um, and like I said, there's a lot more to be seen. Um, who knows? Things might change. But from what I've seen, like you could just see the IPF has just been constantly progressing and making the better changes that I feel that I would want to be um, like more. Part. Yeah, more. So more. now are you announcing you're going to the IPF next year? <laughs> 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 the, I mean, shit, we'll see, man. Yeah. No, I, I think, think we just saw. That yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's why he's been practicing Chinese. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think my biggest thing is like, I just want to go where I feel as though um, my, there's an opportunity to push the sport forward. Yeah. Um, and the IPF just present, presents a bigger sport, yeah. to, a bigger stage to it's do. It's global. Yeah. So it's the Chef, global. when I saw the Sheffield, I couldn't help but like think, I'm like, damn, like, I wish I was there. Mm. You know? So. Is, can, you, can you not do both? You can't do USAPL no, no, you and Powerlifting America? No, I, IPF doesn't allow that IPF, rule. Yeah, IPF, if you compete in anything that isn't IPF, like you get you get uh, suspended or banned for that. For how long? Uh, I think six months to a year. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. So it's like the if you want to be in the IPF, the last meet you do that's non-IPF has to be a year away or six months Something away. like that, yeah. There's like, I think, it, it depends on how like, because I had to retire from the IPF. Like I had to like put in letters and like, wow. yeah, yeah. So I had to like put in an email saying that I officially retired just to make sure like 
the doors open for me to come back. Yeah, you don't get banned. And, banned. Yeah, and like limit like the wow. amount of penalties that I have when I come back. Stuff like that does make it legit, but it that's also crazy. kind of makes it a headache. Yeah, it's yeah. it's. But at the same time, that structure yeah. is yeah. very very important. Yeah, it's it's, it sucks, but like it's it's it, there's a purpose for it right. and i understand like okay like if i do want to come back like i did do the necessary things i needed to in order to come back properly yeah dope yeah damn i've been uh my own personal goal if i if my body stays in one piece i would like to be asian lane norton because next year i'll really? be masters yeah yeah so i'm gonna do a bodybuilding show this year but then afterwards i'm gonna start training my ass off yeah and then see if i could do something cool in the ipf and I'm you should. Amongst the geezers. I will say competing cool. internationally is completely different from competing like locally. I like but. going to me. It's like a whole. It's like a whole different like, like vibe and feel. Vibe feel. Um, it feels like you're competing in a different federation. Like, it's what different. if I bench and my butt comes off, but then I go, I don't speak English. <laughs> oh, they just give me like white lights. The refs don't speak English. God damn. Yeah, like shit. they'll be like, mm, can't. Mm. <laughs> they'll speak English. Damn, that's cool. It's cool to like, because I've been to one IPF. But yeah. it is cool to see, like people with the flags, the, the yeah. singlets. It just feels like a world. Oh no! Event. It feels. I don't know what the Olympics feels like, but I would imagine it feels some something like that. A little think, percent. Yeah, like like maybe like one percent like that because you're not looking at like oh I'm competing against um X lifter. I'm competing against X country. Yeah. It's like I'm looking over. Oh shit, that's Japan. Like yeah, oh that's shit, dope. that's Germany. Like yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like I'm, I'm competing against the best of the best of the world. And you represent the U.S. Exactly. Where at the USAPL Nats. Yeah. You All of a sudden, you start having like pride. You're like, yeah, fuck yeah, USA, bitch. That's like, dope. Yeah. Rolling with a machine gun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A couple Budweisers. <laughs> <laughs> but it's cool because people look at you. It's like, oh, that's like USA. Because yeah. people like people admire like America. Yeah. So they look at you and they're like, oh, that's a representation of America. Yeah, we got a hundred years history of whooping ass in sports. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you're saying here first that you're probably gonna go to the IPF in the next little one, while one to 20 <laughs> years maybe i'm saying the door is open the door is open Flirting. all right yeah you heard it here first see you guys next time